The first video in my new studio. What's up, everyone? I've been away for a few weeks. That's because I've been building this new studio. I moved across the country and now ready to kick things off. Getting back into the new updates inside of Elementor's V4 editor, they launched the variables. And just like I predicted, global styles are no longer going to be needed in the new V4 editor. Because if we look over here in our site settings, our global fonts, these are actually just classes. That's all they are. We create a class and then we assign it the values to that class. The new class builder does all of this just far better. And then if we look over at our global colors, well, these are variables. And again, the new editor is gonna do our variables much better as well. So let's check out those variables. Let's go down to our typography, to our text color, and this is our new variable. In fact, let me disconnect this and when we hover over it you're going to see this new variable icon we click on it and now we could choose our variables and create them right here so i created one for dark text but let's say i want to create one for our light text let's go ahead and click on it select on the plus give it a name i'm going to call this light text and then i am going to give it the value i'll turn this to white let me offset that white a little bit and let's select on create. And now if we're using a dark background, we could easily switch between our text colors. Now, I would create a class and implement these into a class. I'm gonna be teaching that later on as we are starting to build actual systems. I just wanna show how these variables work. Now, let's take a look really quick in the front end because this is the very first thing that I checked out when I was testing this, I wanted to see what does it look like in the source code. Because right now, if I were to look at my global colors, the colors that we've been using, those variables, well, the names in them are just these generated strings of numbers and letters. They don't actually produce the names that we want. And that is very important to not happen inside of this new builder because a lot of us are going to be using this inside of our CSS. So when I went in and checked this out, it was so good to see that the variables are using the names that we assign to them. Now we're still in the early days. Right now we only have variables and colors as this just launched, but hopefully we'll be getting variables everywhere else. We're gonna need them for our gaps, our sizing, uh, even all of our typography values. We just need variables everywhere as many variables as possible because variables are the way to go so let's see what elementor rolls out i'll keep you posted but let's check out the other new updates to the v4 editor first we got css filters and backdrop filters this is pretty good we have our regular filters these are our css filters now this is nothing special to me i mean i rarely ever use these i mean it's kind of good to have a blur this one right here, you're just going to blur the actual element. It, we, we've had this in Elementor already, but the backdrop filter, this has something really cool, and that is, again, going to be the blur. Before I show it, let's go ahead and give a background to the section. For the background, I'm going to go to Overlay, and then I'll select an image. Let me set this up really quick. Let me go over here to my heading, and I'll give it a bit of spacing. Let me give it about three rim. And now let's give it a little bit of a background color. I am gonna give it this white color and take the opacity all the way down. And then from here, we could go back to our backdrop filter, and we could give it that glass morphism effect. And you know with Apple coming out with their, their glass morphism styles, this is, it's already been something that's pretty dope, something I use inside of my designs, but we're gonna see it a lot more. It's gonna be trending a lot more. So it's super easy to do now, where before we'd have to write some CSS to get this done. And next up, we got a new element, and this is gonna be the divider element. You know, at first I was not excited about it. Uh, you can see it's this little tiny dot here. You got to give it a width. Let's go here to size. I'll give it a 100%. So we have it going all the way across. Now, I never use these dividers. I usually just use a border and style the border if I need to because before the dividers would add several extra divs that I found was so unnecessary. But now take a look at the actual code behind it. 
and you can see it's just an HR. That is it. This is clean code right here. This is where things are changing inside of this new editor. Now, back over here, we have a new class manager. And then to access the class manager, you got to go to an element with classes, and then you got to click on this class manager icon. Hopefully, they make this a lot easier easier to find later in the future, but it's good to see that they are working on it. And now we could see where the class is being used. We could see if this class is on multiple pages, if it's in multiple locations. And this is really going to be helpful if we start to get unused classes, because once you start building a full out project and you start to really build your system, your framework and all of your custom classes, it starts to get cluttered sometimes. And there are going to be unused classes and if you want to clean it up, it's very helpful to go in and take a look and see, is this really being used? And if it is, where is it being used? We also have the inherited values. And basically all this is, is showing you what styles are in which desktop, mobile, tablet view. For example, I'm going to go over here to this heading. Let's go to our typography. You can see I've got a 5.5 rim. Well, if we go over to tablet now grayed out, you can see the styles. And this is really helpful because right now when you do this in Elementor, it's just blank. And then you got to kind of go back and forth, back and forth just to make sure you got it right. So that is really helpful. And then we have our pro attributes. And I'm so glad they brought this out. I just wish they had this a few weeks earlier when I did the member stack video because member stack was powered off of data attributes and I couldn't use it in Elementor the way I wanted to, the way I would use it in Bricks. But now we could go ahead and create our custom attributes or pro attributes. This is great for accessibility, but also if you're going to use a tool like member stack, that's powered off of data attributes. This is actually really powerful and good to see. This is a good step for really good updates. I just hope that they could get more of these updates rolling out faster. I know a lot of us are waiting to start building sites with this new V4 editor. There are still very important things that we need like CSS grid. We need more variables, variables everywhere, please Elementor. And then we still got the atomic components supposed to be rolling up. But right now, I just hope for a really good working beta version, at least where we could get started and you know, preparing to really build sites with this new V4 editor. I'm going to keep you posted on all of the updates and I also plan to do some builds as well, showing you how to build full out pages and sites with it. We're going to be doing a lot on this channel, so make sure to subscribe. So that way you can stay notified with all those updates. That's it for this video. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next one.